Is your teenager an attention junkie? That is today's question on tips on teens. My name is Kent Toussaint. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I specialize in helping kids, teens, and families live happier lives. I lead two organizations, the Group Private Practice Teen Therapy Center, also the nonprofit organization Child and Teen Counseling, both here in Woodland Hills, California. Every Wednesday at noon, I jump into your Facebook feed or your Instagram feed and answer your parenting questions live on Facebook. So here is today's question. I've had the realization recently that my son might be an attention junkie. Since quarantine, my wife and I have been at home, but we work about eight hours a day. So even though we're together, we're not as present and focused on our kids as we'd normally be. He's 13 years old, the youngest of three, and the other two are college age and busy with their own lives. It seems more and more, my youngest son wants lots of verbal praise for everything he does. I want him to feel secure and good about himself. Is this an insecurity thing? And what can I do to address the topic with him? So let's jump in right into the question. There's a couple ways I wanna look at this. Number one, uh, I imagine you got this 13 year old boy who's been in quarantine for four months, has me able to go out and see his friends, has me able to go to do anything, stuck in his room, stuck at home. He's got two parents who are working during the day because they got to work and totally that makes sense. He's got two older, older siblings who are college age and don't want to be bothered by their pipsqueak little brother. And he's just sitting there pulling his hair out. He's so bored and ah, what is he going to do? So he goes over and says, hey dad, hey dad, hey mom, hey mom, hey dad when you're trying to do you know, a conference call with your boss and the other people in the office. And it's a little embarrassing and it's a little frustrating. He's like, can I do this? Can I do that? Is this good enough? Is that good enough? And it's driving him crazy. I totally get it. And there are some kids and some people, they just need to be, they just can't be home alone all day. They have to be social, they have to be interactive. Especially there are many kids in my practice who I've known who have attention issues or have been diagnosed with ADHD, whatever. You know, if they're not doing it with someone, it's kind of not worth doing. They need to share the experience. They need to have that shared experience. And, you know, sometimes for some kids, being online is not the same thing. You know, you can say, go out and shoot hoops in the front yard or, you know, draw or read. It's not the same thing. They need to have a shared experience. So it's, it's a challenge. So what I encourage you to do in this situation is make sure that you're involving him as much as you can. You know, when you're in the office and you're doing emails and phone calls, is there something that you can involve him in doing? You know, can he help you file? Can he, you know, is there something that he can do? I've had some families do this where they get their kids kind of working in for the business in a sense. You know, maybe it's, you know, they're not getting paid, but they have something to do and they feel important. They feel responsible. Um, maybe you get them involved in, in volunteering somehow and they're doing something online, whether it's for, you know, a social movement, a political campaign, you know, helping support, you know, people in need. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. Again, he's 13, so your options are limited. If you can rope the older siblings in to spending a little bit of time with them each day, it may be beneficial, but I don't know if you can count on that. Um, but it's tough during quarantine. The other side of this I want to talk about is the insecurity of always needing that validation. Am I good enough? Did I do it right? Did I do it right? And no matter how many times you say you did it right, it's not going to be enough. And so what I want you to focus on, instead of focusing on the end result, let's say he, you want him to do some you know, math workbooks during the summer, right? And he does the workbook. Is it good enough? Is it good enough? Instead of talking about, is it good enough? Talk about his focus, his perseverance, his ability to you know, challenge himself and sit through this, even though it was hard to do. He can control that. He can't control the end result. We can't control the end result of anything. We can control the process of how we approach working towards an end result. If he's painting, you want to talk about how, you know, his focus on color, his focus, his thoughtfulness in what he's doing. You know, what is his opinion on how things are going? What does he think? Does he think it's good? Uh, writing, instead of write, you know, focusing on did he spell things right or wrong, you can focus on his penmanship. So, wow, I can tell you're really focusing on improving your penmanship. Your letters are getting more clear. I can read it more easily. That's wonderful. Focusing on things that he can control. If you focus on the end result, it's always like, I don't know, because you don't know if you can get that end result all the time. None of us get the end result we want all the time. In fact, we don't get the end result we want often, you know, but we have learned to adapt and keep going until we find a result that works for us. Uh, and that goes to that core anxiety. And if we don't start addressing that early, 
it can build and build and build in the teen years and everything comes in question. And there's a lot of reasons why that can happen. I mean, there's thousands of reasons, so I, I can't really go into details of why it happens, but it could be anything, you know, denying, you know, yourself and you focus on something else instead. Focus on these other anxieties so this deeper issue doesn't get addressed. Um, but anyways, spend time, when you can spend time with them, spend time with them. If you guys go shoot hoops in the front yard, just focus on having fun, not about how good he's doing. Don't try to coach him, you know, unless he's really wanting a coach, don't coach him. Because usually when we coach our kids, they don't want the coaching and it just turns into an argument and they feel like they can't do it well enough anyway. So just enjoy the time. If you're gonna sit and watch a TV show, snuggle on the couch together. If you guys are gonna, you know, draw together, have fun, you know, don't focus on who's is better. You know, focus on the fun you're having because we can control that. And that's what we want him to control, focus on is enjoying himself. Because if he can enjoy himself, he might find that inner validation within himself as he gets to be an adult. Complicated topic, I know. But please, if you want me to talk about this more, give us a call or email us. If you have questions, you can always you know, email your questions you want us to answer every Wednesday at noon at tipsonteens at teentherapycenter.com or you can direct message us right here on Facebook. We love hearing from you guys. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next week on Wednesday. Again, my name is Kent Toussaint and this has been Tips on Teens. Bye-bye.